Here's what's coming up on the show. I think these are all the subtle psychological impacts of cuckoldry and chastity. Mm-hmm. Is that it, it's a willingness on both persons' part to turn that entire mechanism on its head. You know, and my husband is still, he's as secure a male as you will ever, ever find. There isn't anything weak about him. There isn't anything, you know, all the stereotypes that you might hear about cuck males, none of that is true. It's empowered him in a way. I mean, it all brings him to tears when he talks about it. Because this, us playing with this dynamic has opened him up to an entirely new world that existed within him. It just needed to be excavated. You know, when your Mm -hmm. partner goes down on you and eats you out, there's this understanding that he's going to get something out of that, that sex, you know, PIV sex is going to be afterwards and he's going to come like, we're both going to have orgasm and it's going to like, that's just, that's the way it is. But there's something for him. He's going to get something out of it. And with chastity, it really takes that away. And so I, you know, I could just go lay down in my bed, spread my legs open, have him come and eat my pussy until the cows come home. This is the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, for the passionate, and for the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Let's go. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm your host, Venus. This is going to be such a great discussion about chastity and key holding. I have Crystal Welch, who's going to be talking with me about the female perspective when it comes to chastity and key holding. And this was originally recorded as a live chat on the Moan app last month during the chastity two week challenge, the locked in love challenge that I did with Key Barrett. And this is such a great discussion. It's fascinating. You will learn what it's really like for women. So it's important for women to listen to this episode so that they can get better understanding of the benefits, not only to themselves, but for their relationship. And it's so important for cucks to listen to this one so you can understand how this really benefits women, what it's like for them. And of course, it's it's a great discussion for bulls to listen to as well, because then you can understand how this chastity dynamic really works within a couple. And how it can really transform the experiences that you have together. And I should mention that there's a lot of discussion around chastity that's happening in the Queen's Quarters community. And you can get free limited access to that discussion, to that community and ask questions, get advice, seek tips, all of that sort of stuff, share stories in the Queen's Quarters community. It's free. You just go to venuscuckoldress.com to register. It's titled Best There Is. It says, if you're interested in this lifestyle at all and you want to listen to its subjects and broaden your knowledge, there's no better podcast than this one right here. She talks about the best stuff and the biggest problems in this lifestyle because she cares. You notice that she cares about it because she really lives it and wants to help, especially women, which is needed. She deserves more support. That is so amazing. I just want to say a big shout out, big thank you to this person in Germany who wrote this amazing five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful and I really appreciate what you wrote. If anyone else wants to write a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, that would be super appreciated. All right, second announcement 
March 8th. It's a Friday. I'm going to be doing another Pillow Talk event with Doc Chocolate. And it'll be a live event at 12 p.m. Pacific time. That's 3 p.m. Eastern. And it'll be live simulcast on the Moan app for free. You can listen in on the Moan app. Or if you are a Queen's Quarter supporter, then you get free access to the Pillow Talk events on Crowdcast, which means you get to watch, not just listen. And we're going to be talking about some tips, suggestions about how to find the right bull. So it's going to be a great conversation. Make sure you don't miss it. Mark your calendars. Like I said, Friday, March 8th at noon Pacific time. Oh, one last announcement. Congratulations to Doc Chocolate, who is the host of the Bulls and Queens podcast. He has just released his 100th episode, and I was the host of that show, and I interviewed him. I put him in the hot seat. So if you want to have a listen to that show, it was a lot of fun. You can just check the link that's in the show notes for today. Congrats to Doc Chocolate. All right, that's it for announcements. Let's jump into today's show. Here we go. Welcome to this very special Moan Chat. I'm super excited to have my guest, Crystal. Um, Crystal, I'm thinking a lot of these people in who are listening right now are have heard you before. But for those who have not, do you want to introduce yourself? Why, sure. Um, so I'm Crystal Welch. I uh, met Venus a couple, a few years ago, and we became soul sisters just automatically. <laughs> we are both, uh, we are both uh, couples worshippers. And my brief story is I was married and divorced and never planned to marry again. And one of the key thoughts behind that was I knew that I, by nature, was never going to be monogamous again. And I wasn't about to make a promise to marriage that included monogamy. And so then I met this, uh, so I, I put a little ad in a Craigslist a number of years ago, after giving it some thought, saying, I think I would be most well suited to a couple's male. Uh, you know, somebody that's completely loyal to me and that I'm never going to be loyal to. <laughs> and uh, and so who should appear but my dear husband, Bidgard, affectionately referred to as Bidgard. <laughs> and uh, and we really do have an exalted relationship. It, it's really grown over the years. But he came from a swinger marriage uh, that didn't work out. But he noticed along the way that he um, mostly liked to watch her. So he was hardwired to it. And now he's like, totally definitely hardwired to it and uh, and we've had quite a journey so so that's my that's my story wow okay so and um and i love the fact that you guys met through craigslist fuck it i miss that website so much i do too i do <laughs> The personals, uh, per, the yeah, personal section of craigslist was fucking fire and weird as fuck all at once <laughs> yeah but very successful. I mean, who goes husband hunting on Craigslist? Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I, I remember like I, I had a lot of success there, too, for finding bulls. And um, I remember like the minute you were you go and post anything on there in the personal section, you would get as a female. Yeah. As, as a, a female, female yeah. you would be absolutely bombarded with responses. And where did we find that today? I have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, I miss Craigslist a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. And so what is your story with chastity? Uh, and I will still, I just want to start out by saying the very first time I met Bitchard in person was I walked <laughs> into a uh, hotel room party and walked up to the little bar that was in there. And Bitchard was there in, I think, just a T-shirt and his chastity cage. And that was it. He was, right. he was bartending. <laughs> That's when I first I met think, him. Yeah. And I think his T-shirt said, I have a small dick. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and him and I had a discussion about what, what drink I should, um, I should get. So anyway, that was when I first, I first met your husband when he was locked in a chastity cage. 
<laughs> well, there you go. That's its natural, normal state. <laughs> So uh, what has chastity been like for you guys? How did you and when did you start uh, experimenting with that? Or had you experimented with chastity before him? Can you believe it's been four years since I first started this podcast? And looking back, I had no idea that this would be my full time job. I love the work that I do. And it's because of you, the listeners, and your support that I'm able to do this. So right now, if you join the Helpful Cuck tier, you get tons of benefits. My favorite ones are the private one-to-one chat every month. You also get access to my private Snapchat group. Weekly live hangouts with me on Crowdcast. I love those. And you get juicy bonus episodes. There's key holding. There's video replays of the Pillow Talk events. And there's also access to my private community on the Moan app. So join right now. You can use the promo code CUCKLOVE2024 for 15% off your Helpful Cuck membership at venuscuckoldress.com. I actually had not. um, And, you know, like most other people, uh, we all go through a learning curve. We start wherever we start. And we go from there. So I think as we got, as I got, I started to write and we started to kind of share our experience and that got traction. And the more we took deep dives into that, the more we were willing to experiment with other things. And so I am very much hardwired. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a female supremacist, but I am very anti male patriarchy <laughs> so I don't know where that puts me <laughs> but I've been pissed off about the patriarchy for you know two decades <laughs> and so a lot of this a lot of this plays into my natural wheelhouse where I mean what other physical thing could you do with a partner that makes the statement I am in control of your total masculinity you know, men that identify with their dick size and their, you know, bravado and all of that stuff. When when he is willing to to sacrifice all of that and give it up and let somebody lock his masculinity away and keep the key and have complete determination over when he might ever get out of that cage, <laughs> um, it's very powerful. Psychologically, it's powerful for both of us in different ways. Uh, for him, it definitely puts him into a subspace where he he is not so prone to forget who's in charge as he is when he's not in the cage. I should, I should put it that way. He's very super alpha male by day. And so we were laughing about this a little while ago, thinking about this podcast that you know, he, he's a challenge because he's like super aggressive, alpha male dude type, um, large and in charge in his business world and all of that stuff. And yet he yearns to just lay all that down. It's like a vacation in his mind. And so it's, it's a particularly powerful practice for us. If I don't leave him locked up all the time. In fact, we, we, we pick up chastity and put it down like a lot of other aspects of this lifestyle, uh, you know, it has to be appropriate and fit with whatever's going on in our life. So we pick it up and put it down. But when we're in, when I have a bull and we've, we're in the arena and we've got an opportunity, we take full use of it. And he's always, you know, we'll start by, we have a few friends that come to visit us and he'll put on his chauffeur outfit uh, and put his cage on and drive to the airport to chauffeur our guests back to our house Mm -hmm. and he stays locked up. He stays locked up all weekend. And I just torment him to the end of the earth. And he just loves it. And so do I, because it gets out all of my patriarchy angst and it gets all of his, you know, he, this vacation in his mind idea that, that he gets out of it. I mean, it just, it fulfills him in a way that nothing else does. It's very powerful. It's much more powerful than you can imagine if you've never tried it. Yes, I agree with that 100%. So do you rem- I remember way back when when I first held a key. 
Um, and I, I, I just thought I'd be like holding someone's key. I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, but I, I really did feel the power and control that came along with it. And I was surprised by that. Do you remember what it was like for you the very first time you held his keys? I, I wasn't as much because I, you know, I put it around my neck, but what I started noticing is that he wanted me to wear this key on a chain around my neck where he could see it because him seeing it. And when I saw his reaction, then that got me even more excited, you know, so yeah. I wear it prominently on a chain uh, with my queen of spades emblem and uh and it re it's a constant reminder of who's in charge and and it's just it's just a, it's super fun it's super powerful and it has um it has taken a good relationship and made it just incredible so did you guys have to like ease into it the chastity thing like was he scared or um were you just like fuck this fuck it let's do this <laughs> Yeah, we're we're pretty much in the fuck it category. We, <laughs> we, we neither one of us are shy and retiring in any way. <laughs> so you know, we just said we're we're doing this. We're going to go for this. And you know, of course, in the beginning, nobody knows what to expect. We, you know, I, I just wanted to see his reaction. And so we, like I say, we use it consistently when I'm with a bull. Yeah. Because it just heightens the tension. It heightens everything. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm going for. That's what he's going for. Yeah. Um, and so far as we know, that's what most of the bulls that we've played with uh, enjoy as well. They like the level of intensity. And um, it just ramps everything up to, you know, off the scale. Yes. And that that's kind of what we're looking for. So we weren't shy about it. We just marched right into it. I mean... There's been all sorts of things we've we've played with impact. We've played with um, you know restraint. We've played with you know making him suck cock and you know go go way far far out of his normal boundaries. Yeah. Uh, all the while in chastity, where he has no control whatsoever over his own pleasure. He can only provide pleasure for myself and the bull. And, uh, and that just fucks with his head. <laughs> I but love how excited you get about that. I love it. I love it so much. But that is, you know, and that is, you know, that's the result that we're going for. Yeah. And so, you know, so just for people who are brand new, who might just be trying this idea on for the first time, I, I wouldn't suggest jumping in with necessarily with both feet like we did. I mean, we, both had very clear ideas of who we were, what we brought to the table early, early on. Like I'm still, I think we're the only couple that we know that advertised for a cuck and we were in the cuck dynamic from day one. I, I'm, I haven't met anybody else. I'm, there's probably a, it's somebody else, but we've never met them. But so we came to the table with considerably more experience than average people. But, you know, it still gets back to the, the rules of the game, communicate deeply Talk about what you're afraid of. Talk about what hesitancies you have. Talk about what thrills you and excites you. And and watch the reaction of your partner and, and then start there. And the other thing I would really strongly advise is um, be willing to pick it up and put it down. I We're not a couple that will ever be bound by hard and fast rules like it has to look just like this and we have to do this all the time and this is how it's going to be and whatever that doesn't work for us in our day-to-day -day life. And so figure out what works in your day-to-day -day life. If it, if it fits seamlessly in your real life, you're much more likely to be open and be willing to explore and, um, and try new things that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you know that there's a one-of-a-kind matchmaking service for cuckolding and female-led relationships? Venus Connections is a private service for single men and single women who want a loving cuckolding relationship. And now there's a new separate FLR program too. There's no scrolling through profiles or sharing photos with members. It's totally private. 
And the dates are blind dates too. Included in the program is a three-week course and an interview with me. So join now at venusconnections.com and use the code TOPTIER2024 for 40% off the top 1% membership. That's venusconnections.com. Make 2024 the year that you get the relationship of your dreams. Um, I was speaking with Key Barrett about um, booking this chat with you, and he is doing the two-week challenge with his wife uh, as well. And she wrote uh, a quote that she would like to share for this chat. So I'm going to go ahead and read that and then get um, your feedback on that as well, uh, Crystal. So she said, locking up has a negative connotation, but it should be looked at as a positive experience for you both as a couple. It's a physical reminder to be present. That can mean a million different things to each couple. It's individual and unique. It can be sexual, subservience, but for us, it's about thoughtfulness His being hyper aware of our relationship and all that that means, our parenting and the million different details that go into making our lives and home turn smoothly each day and picking up that weight, helping me find better balance so that I have room to see myself outside of the definition of wife and mother so that I have space to feel sexual, wanted, needed. And that's something we both benefit from. I love this quote so much. I love that she talks oh, about yeah. it being being about being present, but also about being thoughtful. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I don't know that I've ever heard it more beautifully expressed than that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, she really summed up the essence of, I think, as a female, what, what the benefits for the female are. And in ultimately, in any loving relationship, whether you're married or not, if, if one partner is deeply fulfilled, the other partner will be too. Yes. It's kind of the way it works. It's kind of the way it works. And so she really, and I loved um, that she brought up being present because I think that captures the essence of what actually physically happens. Yeah. It, it makes him be very present. And then as I'm aware that he's so present, you know, throwing out little, and he's also very much into verbal humiliation. So it just gives me, I mean, it just like, it's just like um, injecting my brain with humiliation ideas. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm so creative. <laughs> so it just, you know, they just flow and, you know, and, and that just sends him to the moon for people who don't understand humiliation. I, that might, throw you a curveball but but it's again it's part of that mechanism that the way he's explained it I've asked him to deeply explain what his feelings are and what his experience is is all of that the being in a cage verbal humiliation the physical reminder that he is not in charge um it helps him keep his whole ego mechanism in check I mean, it's probably done more to whatever obnoxious part of, you know, the toxic male patriarchy he's had within him. Um, It's just, it it serves to just sort of kill that off so that it's a great reminder that, you know, my happiness and my satisfaction, my uh, experiencing my own power, you know, it keeps him so present with that, Mm -hmm. which, which, which helps the whole experience just be better for everybody. Cause if he's really present, I'm really present. If I'm really present, the bull is getting all the good stuff. Yes. Yes. It's a feedback loop. It absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. I love what she talked about, how she talked about how it gives her um, space to feel sexual, wanted and needed and outside of being a mother. Um, And I think part of that comes down to easing the mental load of your partner 
And I never really understood mental load. I didn't even hear, like, I didn't even know that what that meant until recently. I actually found this guy. He goes by Zach something or other. And he's like on TikTok and stuff. And he does these little videos and he calls himself a recovering man child. And he talks, <laughs> he talks about mental load and how some partners can be actually adding to their partner's mental load in the relationship and how detrimental that can be. And it's it's something that we do so automatically that you don't even realize it. And so he points that out. And I started watching these videos and I was like, holy fuck, that's exactly because I I always knew that there was something like that, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I started watching that. I was like, holy fuck, you're absolutely right about that. But when I read that quote from Key Barrett's wife and she was talking about how he's more thoughtful and he's picking up that weight of that of the tasks of, you know, every day and stuff like that. And I was like, "Ooh, I feel like that's easing the mental load in the relationship and how chastity can help with that in that when he is more thoughtful, he is more present, he is thinking about her more than himself." Or just when you end the barter system, there is no, you know, me is now we. And so <laughs> um, I think that that that's one of the potential benefits for couples that really hasn't been talked about, but that there's just a massive um, potential there to really help a lot of couples. I don't know. Well, I think, yeah, and it. It, I, I think that's really a good point. It's a really strong point. And um, when you think about, you know, I'm sure it's also true in Canada, but life in the 21st century is not easy for anyone. Um, the stresses that we're all under for, between work issues and economy and politics and kids and whatever. I mean, we're bombarded with the stuff of life. And in the best dynamic, however you define it for yourself, if you can retreat into each other and and have a recognition that getting a break mentally from whatever your routine is, is just golden. I mean, so many, um, Bitchard has retired now, but, it, but that was very, very recent and up until this point, you know, I picked up the role because I worked at home. I picked up the role doing all the housework and blah, 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 blah. It is mundane. It is boring. You don't feel sussy. You don't necessarily feel appreciated. You don't, you just like stuff you got to do. And when you can drop all that for a little while and tune in and, you know, because this, this whole chastity issue is a back and forth. There's benefits for both people, but mm -hmm. you know, making him hyper aware that you are much, much more than a house cleaner or a mom or whatever it is. Yes, um, and, and that he, he, his masculinity thing that he puffs around when he's at work and all that stuff is meaningless to you only in so that it it, it serves your pleasure and. When he gets that and he gets the mental release from that and you get the mental release because he's now focused on you, your pleasure, what you want, how you want to do it, you know, that's a game changer. I mean, think of how many vanilla couples could benefit. I mean, they might not find it in that mechanism, but if they could find it in any mechanism mm -hmm. to find a way to let each other off the hook and really be a mental vacation and not a mental burden. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I love that so much. Um, Shai was asking uh, about if I'll post that quote somewhere. Um, I, Shai, I will. I'll, I'll put it on my Twitter page. I'll put it in the Queen's Quarters um, community so that you can um, you can read that again. But it's absolutely a beautiful quote. I'm so happy that she was able to contribute that. Oh, no, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely so, profound. One of the other things I, w I wanted to ask you about, um, Crystal, in Key Barrett's book, Locked in Love, I think it was in the first week, um, his 
why they were, you know, he was all butterflies and he was, you know, hyper aware of her and her and pleasing her and everything like that. And, and, uh, she unlocked him, um, briefly and they had a quickie. And after that, he had what he calls the drop where he, mm-hmm. yeah, where he was, he just, his mood just crashed and he needed some comfort from his wife. And so now he, he warns people of the drop and that that may happen. And, and was that ever, did that ever happen to you guys when you guys did chastity? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, I mean, really you don't even have to be in the chastity world to recognize most women that have ever slept with a man recognize that as soon as he comes, he's like, you know, see you later. I'm watching the news. You know, it's it's just, it's just that, it's that drop, that that dopamine drop. They get all excited when they have an erection and, and once they ejaculate, that all dissipates and it dissipates very quickly. So that's a real thing, whether you're doing chastity or not, I think it becomes heightened. It's, It's particularly heightened when you're doing chastity because the buildup is usually more intense and there's more links to it. So, you know, the dopamine flooding that your brain gets is there's more. And so by the same token, I mean, it's the same mechanism. Um, That's the way to keep your husband off the news is to just keep him locked up. (laughs) And with, with promises in the future that, if she's pleased, maybe good things could come. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, that's a that's a real thing. That's a real thing, whether you're doing chastity or not. It's just a dopamine drop. I mean, it's just a physical thing that happens. Yes. I mean, I'm the same way. He calls me a dude in a chick body because after I come, it's like I don't want to get out of here. I'm rolling over and going. To sleep. <laughs> Throw the vibrator across the room, and yeah, see you later. I'm the same. I'm the same way. I'm like, I'm totally the same way. Like, okay, that's it. I'm done. All right, all right, we had our fun. Now get out of here. I gotta go to sleep or whatever. Oh, no, it's funny. It's funny. We tease each other about that, but but that's a real thing. And I I think it's true for both men and women. We can get very, very, very stimulated. Yes. And then when there's a release of all that, you know, that, you know, the brain gets flooded and then it drains out. And that's just that's just a physical thing that happens. So I think it it just pays to be aware of that. Um, And I agree with he that very likely because of the intensity of the lockup thing, especially when you're first starting out and you don't know what to expect. um, I, I, I do think it's prudent to pay attention to that and be vigilant about it and, you know, not put yourself. You don't want to get depressed after yeah. what you don't want to do. You want to, you know, recognize that you enjoyed the experience. And but understand if you understand why it happened, it, it's less likely to have any kind of an emotional repercussion. Right. I think. Right. Um, and and Keith Barrett had some advice. Uh, he gives out advice throughout the challenge um, and around between. I think it was like day three and day, day eight. He had some advice for key holders where he said, It's easy for your partner to worship and be devoted to you. The hardest part sometimes is accepting the worship and acknowledging you are worthy of the worship. Do you, do you, do you agree? Do you think, and why is that? That so it could be so difficult for some women to accept worship from their partner. I, I do think that's a real thing. And I think it, again, that's just a product of, of most women have grown up in a patriarchal society where men make the rules and men decide when and men decide if and men decide how. And, and so women just get programmed, I think, a lot of times over time that their what they need and what they want doesn't matter. I mean, look at how women are so self-sacrificing for their kids. Yeah. You know, women, women will bury their whole life to try and help their kids. I mean, but, but this is the nurturing caretaker of the female. And this is my sociology background talking, but I think we're, we're caretakers. We are, we're natural caretakers. And so it's, it's much more, 
uh, challenging to accept that care in return because we don't have a lot of frame of reference for it. So what I did, and I when I recognized that I was struggling with that a little bit, you know, it felt awkward to me, and I don't want to feel awkward in any part of this process. What I started to figure out was what kinds of things make me feel nurtured and uh, cared for. Like one of the things I love, and it's a non-sexual thing, but I love to be petted like a cat. I want, you know, I want like slow stroking of my skin from <clears throat> from top to bottom and just just the sensation of that to me that's just the thing that's really nurturing and as I let that in as I acknowledge that and acknowledge that that's a caring thing that he can do for me then it switches my head around and I'm much more willing and likely to want to engage sexually mm -hmm. so it's worked out in my favor to identify something specific um, that he could do of a non-sexual nature that allows me to feel pampered and adored. And that's how I like it. I like to be petted. Mm -hmm. So um, so that might be one idea for, for other couples, especially for women who are unused to um, nurturing themselves and nurture everybody else in the universe, but themselves is Try and define for yourself what is it that that makes you feel cared for and nurtured. I mean, I'd like him to massage, but he is just opposed to that, and I have just berated him. To my, yeah, but 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 he can do the petting. He can do the petting. He's just not on the massage train. But okay, so we work with what we have. But I think that's the key: is figure out. Women need to figure out, and they need to define it and help him understand what it is that you need that, you know, just fills you up emotionally and makes you feel adored. Uh, and then it, it opens the door to the whole world of other possibilities. But women absolutely need to put some time and effort into that because I don't think it comes naturally to us. No, you're absolutely right about that. I, I always, I always just assumed and believed that in relationships, it's always a give and take and you're always meeting each other in the middle and it should be equal and it should be fair at all times. And that's what a loving relationship is all about. I mean, I never heard anything otherwise up until I found a cuckolding relationship. And then I was like, this is so, it seems so one-sided. I was like, what? But I was like, that seems too good to be true. Like, and then there was this real yeah. awkward feeling I had about it because it seemed unfair. You know, it's how come I get these privileges and you don't? And you know, I, I think you I think even that, that you just expressed, Venus, I think that's evidence of the female nurturer where we are so yes. used to and it feels normal and natural to give to someone else that it becomes very difficult for us to receive. Yes. It feels unnatural. It feels, you know, and w when you really get into the arena and you realize that, oh, my God humiliating this guy and tying up his little dick and depriving him of everything that he enjoys, uh, you know, makes his heart sing. You start to get a different perspective on it. <laughs> totally. But I think, <laughs> but I think, I think even that, that it's so, that, that so many women are hesitant to try cuckolding because they think it seems unfair. Like, I'm challenged to this day, you know, I'll, I'll post an ad somewhere for, you know, and describe us as being a cuckold couple, you know, and for people who don't know that it's a one-sided consensual non-monogamy and I sleep with whoever I want and Richard never does. And so, and people will still it, it will challenge you all over the place. Like, how do, that's so unfair and how can you do that? And that seems so stupid and, you know, and yeah. like, <laughs> Okay, you can have that opinion, but you have to take it. You have to take a deeper dive into the into the dynamic to really understand that. Yeah, and women are going to have a bigger challenge accepting that that somebody could love them and be loyal to them, and they can have complete freedom. That's a much. I mean, why is it that there's probably I don't know what the numbers are. Probably ten thousand men who are interested 
in being cuckolded to every one woman who's willing to cuckold. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. It, it's very, very lopsided. It's very lopsided. And, um, and I think that's a big part of the reason is that um, too many women think it's unfair and they don't understand. I guess the men haven't done a very good job at expressing why they are drawn to that. Why are they drawn to it? What, you know, what, if, if they would be more, if there would be more podcast or cuck podcast talking about what they get out of it, it, you know, it might help bridge that gap. But yeah, but those are the two big social issues. I think that for more people to embrace this, that we have to sort of address. And that is women need to learn how to receive in a much bigger way and feel good about it. And, and cucks need to be able to express you know, all the things that it does for them when men aren't usually quite as expressive as women, but you know, that it would help other people understand if more men could. Oh, hundred percent. One of the things that Key Barrett talks about in the beginning of his book is recognizing the barter system. And uh, for those of you listening who are not familiar with that, the barter system is the trade, the trading of, uh, Doing, helping somebody with tasks or doing chores or just doing something nice for somebody with the, um, with the expectation that that kind of good behavior will get you sexual gratification in some way, shape or form. And it's not, it's not written. It's not said, it's not explained. This is something that's very subvert and like, and you you don't even realize that you're doing it, but the pressure that the sex pressure pressure is there. And one of the things like it blew my mind when I first listened or read about that. Cause I, Holy fuck. You're right about that. One of the things that made me think about it a lot was when I was just talking about women who are some women who are, um, failing to acknowledge that they're worthy of worship from their partner. I think that's probably difficult to even imagine because that sex pressure's always been there. You know, when your mm -hmm. partner goes down on you and eats you out, there's this understanding that he's going to get something out of that, that sex, you know, PIV sex is going to be afterwards. And He's going to come like we're both going to have orgasm and it's going to like, that's just, that's the way it is. But there's something for him. He's going to get something out of it. And with chastity, it really takes that away. And so I, you know, I could just go lay down in my bed, spread my legs open, have him come and eat my pussy until the cows come home. <laughs> <laughs> And we hope they never come home. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a fuck if it's a long time that he's down there. And he's not going to give a fuck because he knows that there's he's locked. He's caged. There's going to be there's going to be no no orgasm for him after this. This this thing that he's doing for me, this act of worship, this, you know, worshiping my pussy, eating me out is entirely just for me and i so i think that chastity is this amazing um way to help women accept that kind of worship from their partner and because that that barter system sex pressure is not going to be there it's not there you're not going to have sex after this you're just doing this for me and he talks about how thrilling that is and how much of a mind fuck that is for him <laughs> which I can imagine. And, um, and, but it also heightens his, um, his senses. He's listening to her more. He's paying attention to the way her body is moving and reacting more. He's really taking it all in, in a way that he wouldn't be if that sex pressure barter system agreement was there. And so I'm like, this is psychologically fucking fascinating. We need to have some research done on this. I think this is just it, so cool. It is. It, it really is. And so, you know, it gets back to that old patriarchal thing. It's that, it, it, you know, that men, you know, how many men still, I mean, I'm sure that you've seen it with some bulls. They, they still approach it like, oh, what am I going to have to do in order just to get the thing I want out of this? You know, you'll see that more often in the bull world. Yeah. Uh, but that barter system has always been there. 
You know, women have been used as chattel since the beginning of time. And so you're, you're, you're going against thousands of years of human evolution where women are not chattel. They're not, they don't have to barter their sex to get food, shelter, or water, or whatever it is. You know, it, it, you're turning the whole evolution of humanity on its head. I mean, think about how big that really is. It's big. That's big. Mm-hmm. And so for for individuals to say, is there a way that I can uh, deprogram myself from thousands of years of programming that says, I need to trade my body for some benefit from a man uh, and, and just disrupt that entire thing. That is so big for him. It is so big for her uh, and it's revolutionary. And if you really want to get into the exalted relationship realm, it's got to be in this arena somewhere because I don't know how else that happens where you can completely disrupt uh, the old rules of how it's always been, where women have to be traded or trade their sexuality for safety or comfort. Um, and it's just really big. I mean, I think these are all the subtle psychological impacts of cuckoldry and chastity Mm -hmm. is that it's a willingness on both persons' part to turn that entire mechanism on its head, you know, and my husband is still He's as secure a male as you will ever, ever find. There isn't anything weak about him. There isn't anything, you know, all the stereotypes that you might hear about cuck males, none of that is true. It's empowered him in a way. I mean, it all brings him to tears when he talks about it. Because this, us playing with this dynamic has opened him up to an entirely new world that existed within him. It just needed to be excavated. Mm-hmm. And he can do that for the female, too. The woman can do that, you know, to open her up to the possibility that she is a queen, that she deserves pleasure, that she deserves comfort, that she deserves safety. And on her terms, yes. her terms alone, you know, he can play with you all night long and then you have an orgasm and roll over and go to sleep and leave him over there in his cage. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> and it's okay. Nobody's being hurt. You know, there's no, you know, everybody gets something out of this if they're willing to do the inner work on themselves. Yeah. And figure out what it is that they that really want that's crying to be excavated. Do you would you agree with the statement that uh, cuckolding and or chastity is an act of feminism? Hmm, that is a good question. I I think so. Uh, you know, I can only go from my own um, perspective, but it definitely was that for me because I was in a marriage before and it was a typical monogamous, you know, I wanted the, just the kid and the white picket fence and the whole traditional monogamous marriage thing. And what I ended up having was, you know, 10 out of 15 years was celibate. You know, he got involved in his job and traveled all the time and we just completely lost touch with each other. And I thought, you know, I'm more lonely in this marriage than if I were single. And I was, I was solidly of that opinion. And that's when I, you know, we ended up getting divorced. And I said, I will never, ever put myself in that expectation ever again that I'm going to be monogamous. If I want to experience someone else for five minutes or five years, I'm going to. And if you want to be with me, if you want to be with me, that's, those are the ground rules. And um, I, I do think it comes out of a feminism because it, it requires a female that respects herself enough and, re- and and knows her own hardwiring enough. And I'm not saying every female wants to be non-monogamous. That's certainly not true. But there's a whole bunch of us that do. You <laughs> yeah. know, that we, we want, and, and my husband's totally on board with that. He, he thinks it's ridiculous that 
you know, when you look at the statistics on monogamous marriages, look at a 78% failure rate. Who would buy a stock if it failed 78% of the time? You know, and it, uh, it just doesn't work for a lot of people. And so finding your way with that, however it is, um, I think is really important because you can be that much more loyal and that much more loving with your partner if you have a degree of, I mean, that's our perspective. If you have a degree of freedom in there, you know, that we have tackled getting emotionally involved elsewhere. I mean, we've, we've walked into the heart of the beast and, um, and we have not found any reason not to do that. So, yeah, I think it does come out of feminism, it's, you know, but it, it requires a woman who, first of all, believes that female power is a thing, uh, that it's a good thing, that she can have female power and not destroy her relationship or the thing that she cherishes the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, it requires all of that. It requires all of that. That's beautiful. I agree. Um yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot lately, whether whether this is an act of feminism. But I don't know that um, I don't know that the intentions start out that way. But I do think that that it comes as a result for a lot of couples. But like he Barrett's wife said, um, the experience is unique to each individual and each couple. So it could be different things to different people. But I do like to believe that this is about putting women in the position of power and control and um, allowing women to ask for what they want and get what they want. And that's been the most incredible part about this journey. My journey uh, when, since I found cuckolding is that I have come to that realization, the Holy fuck, I actually can just ask for it. I can say, I really want you to eat my pussy until the cows come home. And Voila, it fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All you got to do is and ask. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I know, it's ASK. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Um, but again, you know, in fairness, you are a highly self aware female. You, you've been willing to do the inner work. You, you know, and I think the women that get the most out of this, when you can accept the fact that you can have everything you want and you really don't have to sacrifice the intimacy and the closeness and the safety and the stability of a good man who will stay with you, even though you pursue whatever it is your heart desires. You know, a lot of women just flat don't believe that that's even possible. Mm -hmm. So it starts, it starts with that because just like you, if you don't claim it, nobody's going to necessarily just offer that up. But the minute you say, hey, I want you to come over here and eat my pussy for four hours, <laughs> period, and I don't want no back talk, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, you, you don't have a chance of getting that if you don't have the ability to ask for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. I think, you know, it, it, it always gets down to me, you know, each of us, it behooves each of us to be as self-aware as we can, to be as emotionally intelligent about ourselves and others as we can, yeah. and to work within that, because I never, ever dreamed, I'm, I'm way more standoffish than a lot of women, um, I just because, whatever, because I am. And I never, ever imagined the depth of the intimacy that I would experience with a male person until Richard came along. Yeah. Um, but we've built, we've built that together. We've built that together. Uh, but I never even, because I entered this relationship not thinking that that was possible. I just thought, well, if, he's, if he can agree to just let me be, let me be free and let me hump whoever I want. We're good. You know, that's all I really need here. That's all I really need out of this deal. But my God, we found so much more. Yeah. Both of us. Both of us found so much more. Yeah. Um, we only have five minutes left, uh, which I was hoping we would have time for questions, but we don't. So we might have to schedule another chat at some point, um, which I would love to do if you would love to do that as well. Um, but what in these last few minutes, um, well, 
I I would like if you if you could just share uh, some advice for maybe it's a vanilla woman whose partner has said, hey, let's try chastity. I don't know much about it. You don't know much about it. Why don't we do this? What kind of advice, quick little advice would you give um, to these women who who are like, well, I don't Why? Why would I want to hold this key for you? Why would why would I want to do that? What would you say to them? Well, that is a topic that requires about four hours. <laughs> um, I think you know. I think where I would start is, and where we started actually, we we talked about the fundamental ideas of power exchange um, early on. What does he understand about it? What do I understand about it? What is his interest in it? What is my interest in it? And starting from there. Um, to start to figure out who is your partner, really? Who are you and who is your partner? Um, because we all have a position of power in a relationship. And it's up to us to define what that is. And so starting from, I mean, I'm just now, I'm I'm in a conversation with uh, with a person that we plan to meet in another month or so who's really dominant and I'm really not submissive, but I'm kind of interested now, (laughs) (laughs) but that's because that's where the conversation started is I I would like to explore that possibility with somebody that I was attracted to and somebody that I trust. It starts with what is your understanding of your own power and what is your interest in it? And that might lead you somewhere. So I think it always gets back to really deep conversations, um, really deep conversations. Does your husband or your boyfriend, how do they feel about not being the decision maker? How do they feel about you imposing your full sexuality upon them? Uh, and, and their job is to fulfill that, you know? get inside their head. That's, that's the best thing you can do Mm -hmm. because that will lead you somewhere. It will lead you somewhere or at the very least, I think it will give you a place to start. Mm -hmm. And, and from there, follow that trail, follow that trail. And you, you know, and for the females to answer for yourself, what can I see myself uh, holding that kind of control? What would I do with it? How would I want to play with it? What, what would be exciting and fun and and funny or whatever it is that you're looking for? What would it, what would what would that be for me? Mm-hmm. And as you explore power itself, <clears throat> um, that will lead you somewhere. Yes. And then it, you just be willing to be open minded and experiment. Experiment. You know, if if you try something and it doesn't it doesn't hit you both right, then you don't have to do it. You know. Yeah. But keep the keep the conversation going because power is a very compelling thing. And I think there's an element of power in any kind of relationship. You know, yeah. who has it, who wants it, who wields it, who uses it. You know, I, I think it's a, I think it's a big discussion. So talk, discuss what power means to you. Yeah, I love that. And reach out to other women, maybe other women who have um, experience with chastity. I think if we talk to each other and listen for, um, to each other about what these experiences are like, there's a lot to learn there. And it means Absolutely. a lot when it comes from a woman to a woman. So, yeah. And when you, yeah, whether in a chat room or in a community that you might be in, other women that are are working in a female led relationship or work with chastity, by all means, talk, pick their brain because mm-hmm. they have their, they're bringing their experience to the table and you can learn, you know, and take what suits you and leave the rest. I yes. Mean, that's, that's, that's just how we go. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I have, it's been an hour already. I can't believe it. Time flies. I do I know. Have, like what, where did that time go? I have no idea, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I do need to wrap this up. Crystal, this has been really great. I hope to have another discussion with you at some point. Um, we do you, will. yeah, for sure. All right. That's going to be it for today's chat regarding key holding with my lovely friend, Crystal Welch. Thank you to everybody who has popped in on the Moan app to listen in for this chat today. Really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much, Crystal. 
And thank you to you. It was just a pleasure. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. That's where you can book a private chat with me. You can check out any cuckolding events that might be happening. And you can even ask a question for the show, as well as, of course, join the Queen's Quarters fan club and get all the benefits for that. You can also follow me on Instagram, the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. I haven't been banned there Well, I have, but not recently. (laughs) You can also follow me on Twitter or whatever the fuck you want to call it. My handle is at V. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, then you know I've talked about a really, really amazing sexual activity other than cuckolding, and it's called sensual massage. Now, I've received this a few times, and it is fucking mind-blowing. I'm a huge fan, but I there just hasn't been any kind of place for guys to learn how to do it, not that I knew of anyway. Until now, (laughs) I came across this video, this sensual massage video that is on xoafterglow.com, which is a pretty cool site. It is porn that is meant to be real, educational, entertaining, of course, um, but really cool, made by women and lots of different kinds of porn as well. So I found this video on there. And I was like, oh my God, yay. It's really hot. It's this real couple. And he's actually, in the beginning of the video, learns how to do the massage. He's obviously watching some sort of instructions. He talks to his wife about it. And um, she's on the massage table. And he gives her an amazing sensual massage. Now, it's not as long as I would like as far as length of time. But the video is great. And I'm so happy to see it. It's really hot. It's really sexy. And it just mm, presses all the buttons for me. (laughs) So if you want to check it out, you should go to xoafterglow.com. And right now, if you enter the code Venus, you can actually get one week of uh, free access to it, a free trial. So that's xoafterglow.com. Enter the code Venus. And the link for that, if you are not going to be able to remember, is in the show notes for today. Enjoy. Enjoy.